Welcome back to the workshop on this cold snowy day here in South Germany. Today we're having a look at some more broken shits, particularly my old Metabo table saw. Now this is some old footage that I filmed last summer but never got around to editing it. I go through the process of diagnosing this saw and do a bit of reverse engineering on the soft start circuit. Let's jump right in. Hold on, let me show you what it's doing. Maybe it's easier. It's going to be locked. This is a soft start circuit. So that's what it's doing. I looked up the Wong Chong family over in Taiwan there. The Googles has yielded me this right here, which is the patent application. Basically, there's two ICs on the board. One is this U1, it's a microcontroller, and a U2, and that's a comparator. And basically what happens is this microcontroller here, when you hit the switch A, that's the power switch, this thing will activate and using this triac right here, it will create a kind of voltage ramp and speed up the motor. This resistor right here, resistor 20, is monitored here on one leg of the comparator, reference to this reference voltage, which is settable by a little potentiometer. The voltage that's here is greater than this reference voltage. The comparator sends a signal to the micro, which then enables this relay right here via this transistor. Uh, it's a single phase universal motor. And that's not 100% sure that's how it works, but that's kind of how it looks like it works. Okay, here we go. So um, easiest thing to check first first we need to identify the components on the board here um, basically this guy here is the relay this is the triac this is our little voltage divider this is the comparator this is the microcontroller and then that's the transistor which controls the relay and i have no idea what this bridge is for i don't know what that is then some other chicken food type of parts on there so First things first, let's check this relay. The two terminals here will be the coil. We can just check those for a resistance and there should be more than nothing, but less than open. 15 kilo ohm. Ah, it's a 240. Okay, so it's a high voltage relay. So if the coil is high voltage, 15 K ohm could, could be reasonable. Coil rating. 13,490, so 13K, what do we measure? 15K, so I would say the coil is fine. We can try to check the transistor and dial. All right, some time has passed. Here's where I'm at. I've checked the whole voltage system of the circuit, it works fine. So you have here the AC coming in, rectifier diode, which turns it into a half sine wave, Zener diode, which clamps at five volts, then a couple caps to smooth this out, and then you get your five volts DC, which is fed to the micro, so the comparator. That all works. Then I'm starting to look at this section. So this is the comparator, and this is our smoking gun. This signal here from the comparator to the micro is the signal which says that the motor generated voltage across this sense resistor is higher than the reference voltage, which means that it's in overload. So this portion of the circuit is not controlling this relay, what I thought it was originally doing but this portion of the circuit is actually checking for overload. So it seems that the circuit is actually working fine, which brings me to the motor. So what I want to try to do is take my metal chop saw, connect it to the circuit, and see if we can start this saw with that circuit. So here's what we got there is a uh, power strip which i've connected 
there to our little soft start circuit. That cable there is from this saw. This saw has a zip tie on the trigger, and now this saw should be able to be started by that button right there. This is plugged in, so we're live. Let's go. Well, as you heard and saw, the saw started up just fine. It ran, so I released my uh, fingers from the trigger of that, and it stayed on. That means this circuit is 100% okay. Uh, which is bad news for our table saw because that means the motor is dead. So here I'm removing the motor from the saw and then I chucked it up in the lathe to clean up the commutator in order to ensure good contact to my multimeter for when I check the rotor as well as good contact to the brushes. I'm using a bit of sandpaper and scotch bread. I cleaned out all the metal dust which this made between the commutator bars afterwards off camera. If you want to know how to check these universal motor rotors, there are plenty of good videos on YouTube. I linked one below. Here's where we reach the first oopsie of this process. You'll notice that my meter has a resistance precision of one tenth of an ohm. This, as it turns out, is not sufficient for detecting a defective rotor. I didn't film it, but I used another meter which goes to the hundredth of an ohm, and there you can see that there is in fact a difference between the resistances on the commutator bars, pointing us to a defective rotor. Right, now it's very possible that our only problem was actually, if you saw the last shot, when I cleaned off the um, commutator ring here, it was quite dirty, full of carbon. It's possible the only problem with this thing was this carbon buildup here, which was causing a slightly, slightly higher load and therefore a higher res um, voltage generated over that sense resistor and the circuit was just tripping out because we had too much resistance between the brushes and the commutator here. And if you look at the brushes, they look like they've been arcing for a while also. So I'm wondering if you look at it real close, especially there, you see, ah, you motherfucker. Especially right in that area, it looks like it's been arcing quite a bit on the bottom side as well and here. And they both have a little bit of that. So I'm wondering if we can't just put this back together and it'll work. But let's check the armature first, make sure it's all good. Uh, yeah, that's my resistance. That's not going to work at all with the brushes not in there. Herp de derp. So we should measure between a load and this brush. 0.9 ohm. Well, it's not open. That's good. I'm really wondering if that's the only issue. Man. I think that's all that happened with this thing. Bad. See if it's shorted to the... Uh, Side if it's shorted to the metal. No, it's not shorted, it's not open, it's got I would say a reasonable a reasonable uh, resistance. Alright, here we go. I got it back in the saw. There's the motor. Um, there's no blade or any of the other or the gear or anything there. There's just the rotor into the housing. Uh, here I've connected our switch back up. There we have power. Let's see if it runs. So I've connected it directly to a cable. Uh, we're just going to plug it in, run it for a while and see what happens. So here's what I learned. The soft start circuit is okay. The armature is okay but the rotor is starting to die. It seems that there's either a soft short, so a high resistive soft short, or a relatively low resistive open somewhere inside the rotor, meaning that this motor will probably continue to run for some time without the overload detection of the soft start circuit. So if the saw was directly plugged into the wall without the soft start, it would probably still run for a while. Basically, the diagnosis is a new rotor. 
Now I checked online, a new motor for this saw is available. However, I've been wanting to upgrade this saw for a while anyways. So I went ahead and sold this saw to a guy who wants to fix it and bought myself this new table saw, which has no complicated circuitry, only a good old three phase 380 volt motor. Thanks for watching. Ciao. -y.